and it is Friday. It is a Friday afternoon, gentle people. Good, 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 good afternoon to you and welcome to day 10. Day 10. We coming down, people. Today is day 10 of our Virago Warrior Woman series. I am Dexter Springer, your host for the afternoon, library assistant one attached to the Arima Public Library of the Public Libraries Division of Nalice. Yeah, that is a mouthful. I practice that plenty. Right, so we're here today. We're here today and... um. We have our Virago Warrior Woman. We have our author of the month is Mrs. Michelle Borrell. And she is featuring her new book soon to drop on the 21st. The launch is on the 21st, releasing for sale on the 25th. And it is entitled Virago Warrior Woman, the Butterfly Edition. So you don't want to miss the launch that is on the 21st. That's this Sunday. This Sunday. The day after tomorrow. At 5 p.m. in the afternoon time, going all the way to 6 30, we will be entering City Mall in the middle of the mall with the launch of Virago Warrior Woman, the Butterfly Edition. All right, and for the past few days, I've been telling you what is a Virago. A Virago, the word Virago is defined as a woman of great stature, strength, and courage, or basically a warrior woman. So, in the book that is entitled Virago, we have these warrior women, all 15 of them, that would share their experiences and lessons encouraging all who would read it to stand in their authenticity and awaken their inner warrior, which will give you the courage to go on. Of course, you can find out more about Virago on Instagram and Facebook at Virago underscore global. That's V-I-R-A-G-O underscore global. On Facebook and Instagram, you're going to see lovely pictures of the Virago we have sitting before us today and the others that are featured within the book. All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, under the sound of my voice and in the view of my face, we have a Virago today. We have a Virago today. And this Virago, Penny, as she's fondly called, has been involved in the theatre industry for the last 30-something years. You can even put that up. I tried that. That was a typo. It, lo <laughs> it looks so, and they didn't correct it. They didn't correct the typo. They leave it just so. Right? The co-producer of Ha 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 Productions with her friend and fellow actress, Nikki Crosby. Penny is also a writer, director, teacher, and casting agent in Trinidad and Tobago. She, ha she has cast international movies and television productions, plus a number of radio and TV commercials. Penny is also a host on the Facebook live program OMG with Cecilia Salazar and the TV6 talk show The Sisterhood. She has acted in plays such as Jean and Dinah, The Owl and the Pussycat, Mary Can Dance, Man Better Man, Run for Your Wife, Best Little Ho House in Guapo, Desperate Housewives of Port of Spain, Pizza Man, Carnival Medea, The Cuss Calypso Girls, What My Best Friend Did to Me, and The Naughty Minister. That's a lot. I mean, even call all. She has yeah. also appeared in films such as Basodi, The Cutlass, and Play the Devil. She has written and directed shows such as Think Like a Lady, Act Like a Man, Hot Mo Granny, Midlife Crosby, Fifty Shades of Gravy, and The Ridiculous Six and a Half, as well as many children's productions such as Circus, 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 Magical Kingdom of Us, and Pinotito and Zico. Right? <laughs> Penny has been a drama teacher and the, at the International School of Port of Spain, St. Andrews, St. Francois Girls College, St. Monica's Prep, and currently teaches drama, storytelling, and creative writing at Newton Girls. The artistic director of Necessary Art School Production, she runs a three-month basic acting theater course for adults. Penny has just completed her first children's storybook with Lila Posad, titled Tales from the Forest. They are working on their second book. She no runs a children's production company with classes on Saturdays at Necessary Arts. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you none other than the wonderful, multi-talented, skilled, very well experienced Miss Penelope Spencer, a.k.a. Auntie Penny. Auntie Penny. Auntie Penny. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you for having me, Dexter. Thank you. You are most welcome. It is a pleasure indeed to speak with you like this one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, many of those who are looking on 
We already see the comments coming in. Laurie is saying hi, Auntie Penny. Mm -hmm. is. Valina is saying hi, everyone. Nikki is here. Miss Penny in the house. <laughs> right, Ricardo is saying hi. Laurie Blake Carrington is well, we see Laurie again. Laurie laughing. Michel, okay. Well, Michelle here. And of course, my good friend Uncle Wilka is here. And we have Miss Michaela Pande is here with us. Hi, Auntie Penny. Lovely to be able to listen to your interview. Nice, and of course, we will be hearing from Michaela herself later on. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss anything as we finish up for the next six days coming afterwards. So, Auntie Penny, we have you here yes. today. Yes, I am here. We have you Thank here you. today. Yes. So, one of the first things I want to ask you... I feel so honored to be in the library. <laughs> yes. This is the only time they might kick me out. Welcome. <laughs> You're here to stay. They will never kick you out again. If they ever do it before... <laughs> This that was the last time. All right. Go After ahead. today, no more kick out. I have to respect no talking in the library. Yes, go ahead. Today, today you could talk as much as you want. Okay. We're breaking that rule today, right? Nice. So, you know, um, what I want to ask you, Auntie Penny, this is a question I guess I myself probably never heard answered before. If you ever answer it, or there might be others. What was it like the very, very first time? The, because you're doing this thing for years, for, for a literal lifetime. What was it like the very first time you got into acting and theatre? Oh, you got my friend in there. Where are you going, boy? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm carrying it too far. <laughs> um, you know, I got into acting and theatre really by chance because my first love is dance. I love to dance. I've been a, I started okay. off dancing since I was like eight years old. You know, after kicking down all the, the ceramics and the little ornament my mother had in the house, she said, no, you you go outside, go by Arawak Dance Company, go by Torrance. And... So I, I, I was always a dancer. But right. then I went to, an, um, I went to an, an audition in Port of Spain, and it was a musical. I didn't go to sing, just to tell you that. <laughs> I, I went uh, as a dancer to dance, and then the director which, um, said... He didn't want dancers dancing alone. He wanted to hear and see everybody. So I read a little part. And that's how I started really acting seriously. Yeah? You okay. know, I did something in school, but I didn't think it was serious, you know, because mm -hmm. my English teacher sent me to the drama club because I was talking too much in class. Yeah, I know about that kind of thing, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but that's how I got into it by chance, really. All right. So, so then you said your first love was dance. So is it that, and you say it's by chance, so... Is it that your first love still is dance and you would rather dance or you end up falling in love with acting and everything to go along with theatre and arts? All of it. All of the above. Because right. I, my first love is dancing, but my knees are telling me a different story. Like, they have their own, you know, their own mind. They're fast. Like, they're playing fast. Don't worry, yes, too. They're playing fast. The two they're of them. fast. And, mm. But I love acting. And I, I, I love plays where I could combine the both, like Jean and Dinah and American Dance. There are two, two plays that dance and acting is, is prominent, and I mm. really enjoy doing plays where I have to do both. So, but, yeah, dance yeah. Is, I love dance. I love the expression of dance. I love to express without words sometimes, you know? Okay. And I love dance for that. You could, now, now is, there, is there any difficulty at any point to separate... Um, theater life and real life you know involving all the acting and all the different characters because over the years you have had so many different faces so i was wondering okay which face we will get today because you had so many different faces so many different character changes so is it sometimes difficult to return to reality sometimes sometimes you know when i was younger learning to separate was kind of challenging um sometimes you know after the play finish you just don't want to go home to your life you want to stay in that phase of that dress you want to stay in the dress that that character wore and you go and you know um drink and lime and hope for the best but no i mean <laughs> yeah but try that you try it you try it you try um, it before uh, yeah yeah okay, of course, okay. long 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 time ago um, <laughs> right. but um but you have to be able to separate, you know, I, I, I pride myself on being a professional mm -hmm. and a professional would know how to separate and separate it to real reality and stage. So um, I don't have a problem with it now, you know, but I know a lot of people and a lot of um, actors uh, um, can't find the way how to do it. So some of them end up drinking and some of them 
end up going places that you know also, but that, that it, happen it is something that could be it could be difficult it could be it could be it could be it could be to dance to see to, and all kind of different things could happen you could you act a character that is nothing like you and what you would want to be and you want to achieve and you want to go there and, and you have to you know you have to stay in your hole so it is difficult for some people for wow sure. okay okay i didn't yeah. think it would be something that you know would be hard that um for people to return to their um yeah. you know to their normal self you know i mean i've seen it in, yeah. in you know in, in, in the international yeah. stage but i didn't think that it was actually something that was that serious but even as as we speaking of that um let's see i just i, I like to pay attention to the comments here i just saw a comment there i missed it a little bit no it, 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 yeah Oh God. All right. All right. Look like we we getting some little um we getting some little static here with Auntie Penny. I hope we could get rectified soon. What? You hear me, clear, Auntie? You hear me, clear? I think we lost here a little bit just now. Are you hearing me? You hear I me? we hear you. I hear you now. Yes. Yeah. Let me know if okay okay right i think we have your yes. back i think we have your back now i think we have your back okay cool yeah all right yeah like we have your back good all right welcome back yeah. <laughs> all right so um i want to ask you now your life would have I, I would like to think that would be one of a lot of excitement because it's acting is theater and never yeah. a dull moment but yep. you know what it's was there? I support us being it's it's you know it's everything yeah so was there any moment in your in your life where you had a, a a low point where you thought you might end up not doing this thing again where tell us if you seen me i go and rest down after night done with that was there any low point in your life like that where, where you hit rock I mean, bottom talking about low points i mean if we don't have enough time to talk about low points in one life you know but um oh lord but acting mm. i never ever felt like giving up acting i love acting i love i love Sweet. what it does to to people I, i've seen what the what a play could do to an audience i've seen how acting and and theater can educate i, I as well as entertain and it's something i never ever thought of giving up you know okay. i would think of taking it somewhere else or go somewhere else and do a thing but say to give it up no i i think i was born here and i appreciate it and i thank god every day that he blessed me with a little talent that i have but giving up was never um you know you get frustrated when you you, you try to get sponsorship and nobody coming and nobody cares mm -hmm. and you know, things like that will frustrate you you know but okay. I, I I can't let it frustrate me that much. I do what I have to do, and God is good, and I go with nice. whatever happens. It happens, and what is to be will be. That's my philosophy. Yeah, that's the that's the attitude that that they realize that most of the variable women would have. You know, they go beyond the, yeah. the hindrances and stuff like that. Yeah. You Obstacles. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obstacles, nothing as we just say now. Right? Yeah. yeah, but you know, one thing another thing I want to ask what what major differences uh have you seen over the years um in terms of the changes in in the way that theater that theater is compared to probably let's say about 15 years or when you just started or let's, even... let's say at 15 we used to be the top 15. 15. <laughs> understand fully 15 years that is okay no 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 serious. But, um I just like we are growing as a society where theater and the arts where it's concerned mm -hmm. but um we still have people with that mindset of it's just a hobby you know you ain't gonna get nothing from that you know mm -hmm. we still have those parents but when i used to go to school i mean when i heard theater i thought i was going into a drama class or a dance class but no it was visual arts you know i can't yeah. save my life still you know and and then we but now we have theater on the syllabus theater is an option for children you know children doing the sbas and i've been doing sbas with you know on theater 
at, um, people and I'm one of them. And, and I, I love that. That was mm. not my experience when I was going to going to school. So it that has changed, you know, um, it's mm -hmm. getting into the schools and children, children are opening up through theater and maybe right. becoming a whole or what. So that's good. But um, it, it um, the sponsorship, the way people treat the theater as they would treat sports, it's totally different still in Trinidad, I find. You know, we have people, um, we have people would give things to soak up as, 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 as where theater is concerned is a different thing. So mm -hmm. we as, as artists still trying that fight and that good fight you know, and uh, with people out there making it on the, and uh, out there making it, maybe now the Winston Duke, and you know, Rudy just went away today doing a series in the States and LA, he went to film a series. And you know, okay. when these things happen, yeah. people will recognize that the arts could do something. I mean, I live off the arts, you know, I, I am no big shot, but I, I pay my own rent and I have my own car and you know, and I do yeah. what I have to do. So, so, that has that that that's changing. That's changing. So, so, the, so, so you think you think somebody who, let's say somebody who had the passion that you would have had all those years ago when you began. You think somebody who now get, having that passion would be able to come into theatre and and you know build a life off of it the way you would have gotten the chance to do at this course, point. They could do point. so much more now. They could they have access to so much more now it's than what yeah. I had. You know, okay, I, I have okay. a friend who is in LA. She just went and she she's going out there and she is sacrificing. She's sleeping in her car if she has to, and she's mm -hmm. going to auditions. There are people doing that, you know. Wow, and wow, yeah. I didn't have that kind of access and you know finances and all of that, you know. I and and it's happening. And they could do so much. You could go. You could go to school. You could go do Stella Adler. You could go to Juilliard. You could go. Things happening, man. People have nice. access. A real access out there. My thing was Best Village. That was it, and that's my goal. That was my school. So I okay. made it through Best Village, you know? But also, yeah. they say, you know, in this time, there's more access where people could even do a lot more than you were able to. Of course, uh, of course, of course. Okay. Of course, what? they have a lot more going on with young people now, and they have TikTok. Well, the only TikTok I know was the, the grandfather clock. Uh, you know, <laughs> hello, people are walking the avenues that can express themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is true. This is true. Wonderful. It's wonderful. All right. So, so we taking notes, people, young people. Once you're watching this live here now, or you're watching it after, take notes. You have the avenues. Run. Yes, hard. use them. Stop sitting yeah. down, sit down, and, and wait for nothing to happen. You attack with full force. Ah, boy. There we go. <laughs> so, 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 tell me then, what what was your 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 most memorable or your most your proudest moment in your in your in your career that that one moment where you will never forget for the rest of your life that you would say probably even would have made you say this is why i got into theater what was your proudest moment? Know. um there were lots there were lots okay there were lots one of the one of them one of them would be the first standing ovation that i got you know mm. when people stood up and applaud when i came out and i bowed i said oh, oh, oh. it is real <laughs> It okay. happens. All right. Know, that that uh, that's very um that stands out for me in my life. Um, the first mop a drop that I mop a drop on because that's how I used to get to town to transport myself from San Fernando to Port of Spain to rehearsal because I had okay. one ten dollars and that was to get back home. So I had okay. to mop a drop. So I just wanted to find my belly and say, "Betty, do it," and I did it and the stop. So <laughs> and that, so that was that was outstanding. Um. I, I, I used to make pillory to sell to make money after a while and I just had I had the balls. I said, Okay, Penny, you're gonna do it and my neighbor pushed me and 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 we went and I sold I used to sell pillory and beef pies and coconut drops and in the mm -hmm. hospital in San Fernando and I would sell these things and make money after a while because I couldn't mop drop for mm -hmm. a while. That's what we used to call it long time. Yeah, drop. Yeah, drop. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and I, I'm proud of all of those moments. I'm proud of my son. I love my son. When I gave birth to my son, I, I'm proud of what I remember that vividly. You know, so I have so many here. Yeah, so that's a, among them. All right, awesome. This book I am proud of. 
Vibe yeah. Rego, I am proud of being a part of it. I'm proud of KFC and Medical Associates and Extra Foods and Trin City Mall and Nexus Advertising and GMGT Live. I am proud of them for coming on board because sponsorship is so hard to get. So these people, yes. thank, you, thank you, thank you. I'm proud of that. I'm proud we of always life. Great. We're always grateful for people who could see yes. the dream in us yes. and help us to carry it forward. So we're I'm grateful for of, that. It's, it's a lot to be a proud of. Proud of Necessary Arts. That's my yeah. baby. Newton yeah. girls, I love that. Those are the things I'm proud of. Well, I guess that's the next book we will get from you. The things that I'm proud of in my life as a theater, as a theater <laughs> artist. Yeah, so nobody would buy it though, because people don't like other people to be happy. Hmm. Well, we will talk about we will talk about that in our next interview. How yes. you deal with that? How you deal with negativity, um, Auntie Penny? You know, you know what I I did, and I want to tell people one thing: it never stops. Negativity mm. never stops, no matter how old you get, or no matter how known you might become, or or how much you icon you think you are. Mm. There are always people out there who always look at you and try to bring you down. And that happened to me the other day. And I was like so shocked to hear this person really talking negative about me. And I was like, wow. And I was like, this it never ends. Yeah, yeah. It never yeah. ends, no matter your age. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> negativity nothing <laughs> nah, hang up. so i don't negativity it nothing, I nothing. Ends, and I'm, I'm really sorry for people who are not strong-willed to deal yeah. with that that has been difficult if you don't have the mind to, to deal yeah. with it you know even as we had spoken to shannon she says she has learned the art of selective listening yeah 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 selective yeah. listening yeah yeah so, yeah yeah so, I, um, so, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let it guide me or, or, or define me, you know, what people think of me, you know, okay. I'm just going to be the best that I could be. That's what I want to say. You probably could do that as a class at your school because some people need to learn how to resist negativity. I know. I try with my children. I try yeah, really and I warn them people. and I tell them and, you know, it is mm -hmm. to be expected. You see, because some people, you're not expecting it. You mm -hmm. see, when you don't expect it, it it's surprising and it, and it hurts the most. When oh, so it, so you have to kind of brace yourself first. Yeah, get strong. Yeah, all right, get good. And armor. So yeah. let, me, let, me, let me check in on these comments. I see Nicole Nimrod Blake is saying, big up, Auntie Penny. And um, we have Leanne. Leanne is just saying, we are proud of you, Auntie Penny. Would love. Keep it, keep inspiring. Keep yes. inspiring. So yes. let me ask you this then, Auntie Penny. What is it like? Being in theater arts now at this point in your life, and, and I mean, even way before now, you would become well known. You know, the whole country know Penelope Spencer by now, right? Well, three quarter, let's see. At least, at least three quarter. Some uh -huh. of them who just born will find out later, right? But um, what 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 is it like? You know, being a person and and a theater icon, as well as being a teacher in the school system, you know. So it's like Penelope was just on stage in Mary can dance, and then Monday morning she she does up and she yeah. good morning class, you know. What what yeah. what's that what's that like, especially for the children in the school? And I love it. I love I love taking on different roles. It keeps mm -hmm. me alive. It keeps me, you know, <laughs> always thinking quickly on my feet. I don't ever want to get sucked into any one thing. You know, I love working with children, you know, they rejuvenate me. I love mm -hmm. working on a character and I would do a character and do a good performance and you get a good round of applause. And then next morning you're something else. I enjoy it. You know, I thrive on that, mm -hmm. that kind of excitement, that kind of energy. And it's mm -hmm. wonderful, you know, and I, I'm thank God I knock it wood that I'm able to do it. And God has yeah. the energy and the power to do it, you know. The, the, um, so I, I love doing it and I respect it and I know how to separate and it's important that people know how to nice separate. I'm glad you say that yeah 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 so that's 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 that's, that's me with that yeah, that's so was it was it like you know the, the girls who come miss we see you last night it was real good it was is yeah. that is that kind of thing that would happen sometimes that happens sometimes that happens because I do a lot of story children telling sorry where mm -hmm. my children would see and you know and they're always very proud of me and they all um the, I have Tales from the Forest, the book that I bought. I know mm -hmm. and it's in some schools now, and they, they read it and they say, Miss, I have your book. Uh, Miss, you can sign the book for me. So mm -hmm. I feel very um, honored and that children love me. I don't really care for the adults because it's <laughs> <from> <laughs> You are not the first person I've heard say that. I know, but I love working with children. And that's mm -hmm. why I, will, I wrote this other book, 
to Christmas is coming out called Toy Troubles. I love that book. And it's always, it, it addresses toys, it addresses parents' role in children's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's, an, it's, it's written in a way that they could enjoy it. So I'm really looking forward to that book coming out for this Christmas as well, Toy right. Troubles. Well, so I'm looking at children, yeah. Uh, so and you know every time we, we love um especially at now we like to have that focus on the local authors on west indian authors so it would be good for to have your book good that book now added to the collection yeah. you know and as you speaking of books now give give us your version of how virago began give us your version to, to your your version of the story how the whole idea for virago come about to bring all these women together 15. i say yeah. when 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 Michelle come and say, Penny, I'm just here. What do you have to go, man? I say, you're mad. 15 man, hello. I have drama in it. I thought about the absolute, for like, I was doing all the time. I've come to that before. It's such an idea that needs to happen now. You know, when I hear about all the cases of the domestic violence and and you know, the, the, the way they treated men in the society. Now, I think a book like this was so needed. When she told me that, I said, Yeah, let's go. I definitely, I definitely come on board that train because mm -hmm. I think it's, it's important. It's important. It's so needed right now. And I'm yeah. having kind of, I had a plan I could just do this area. So it's like a manual life for women. You know, mm -hmm. it's something that everyone gets from that book. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things that would go like, sorry, and laugh, and then sorry, mm, like, oh, you know, yeah. I like that, I like that, but that's, so when, um, so seeing that, it, it, how it all materialized and what's happening, I said, mm -hmm. I'm so glad uh, that I'll stuck with it, because she's such a trooper, she's such a, a, yep. a go-getter, you know, she, yep. she makes up her mind that she wants something happen, it mm -hmm. happens, and I like that about her, I know I like that kind of energy myself, that's how I think, uh, that we're doing it or we're not doing it, you know, let's go. But do halfway do it. I hate mm -hmm. halfway done things, that's my one of my pet peeves. Mm -hmm. You know, I always tell my children, I, you're doing something, go wholeheartedly, you don't go at all. But mm -hmm. don't do halfway things, don't, you know, yeah. But I thought no. this book was an exceptional idea. Right, and um, one thing now is we, we're looking at 15 women here and their stories, and when I was looking at your interview with Mr. Johnson on the AM, um, the AM show, you mentioned that, you know, a 16-year-old young lady could pick up the book and read and learn and stuff like that. But what do you think about the book's impact and today being International Men's Day? What do you think about the book's impact on, on men? You think that men could actually read this book and, 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 and glean from it? Definitely, I think so. I think my son could learn, look at this book and read from it and learn from it. You know, because mm -hmm. understanding the way women think is one of the things that stands out in this book. Sweet, yeah. And if you're yeah. a man and you want to know how women think and you want to know, and you know, you could read this book and get a lot from it. You mm -hmm. know, when you see the trials and the tribulation that some of the women went through in this in these stories, you would understand them better. Yes. You know, we really take things for granted, you know. You know, we assume that ah, that girl thing. No, it's not that at all. It's not that at all. I, 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 man or woman, any woman lessons are universal. Everybody learn from that. You know? I, you know, I, I always say, and um, this is not uh, as others always tell only. I don't, mama guy. I always say that a woman's a woman's threshold for pain is a lot a lot higher than a man i always say listen if men would to if men would to give us children, listen children, I was, i'm not i'm not going to tell you if men would he mm -hmm. wants to carry it we every father would die a childbirth every okay. single man will die a childbirth so god know how you orchestrate <laughs> this thing right yes. Every yeah. mother would be telling, yes your father was a wonderful person when he carried you but he died he, he will <laughs> men will die a childbirth right yeah. but women i have yeah. always said women have the greatest threshold for pain you know yeah. so i salute women on that all right um all right so let me go a little light now where's one thing about auntie penny that might surprise us if you tell us today that we never would ever think that about, about me one thing yeah about people one surprising fact 
um, uh, uh, um, who, who I think everybody know. I'm trying to think about some grand people don't know about me. Um, who good? I think uh, am I left such an open book? Uh, yeah. I like fruit juice. No, that's that's boring. <laughs> um, I have four granddaughters. I'm really proud of my granddaughters. That I, is a surprise for me, at least. Yeah. Serious. I have four granddaughters that I love. Wow. I, yes, my one son. Give me four granddaughters. Wow. Yeah. He's a trooper. <laughs> yeah. He's a trooper. All right, all right, cool. There you have a word. Huh? Trooper is a word we could use. <laughs> At the penny, listen. No, you don't have to write it, man. <laughs> I should have put it in black and white. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's where you are. Hey, listen, we still <laughs> we wanted to surprise you people. They have to see it on here too. I know. Right? So, you know, um, listen, who, who you would want to thank, you know, in terms of and apart from the sponsors, and you will be able to acknowledge them again if you desire, you know, but in terms of you know, you who who was there with you from, from the get-go? I know Auntie um Auntie Nikki probably was one of was one of those persons. Who would have been with you? But who was with you from the get go? Even throughout you your know, whole life at theatre, who you want to say? When when Michelle asked me to write this book, I was I just went back remembering Raymond Chukong was always saying, "Penny, yeah, boy. you have to do your story on stage, you know. Penny, you have to do your story on stage, you know." Yeah. I mean, because a little bit of America dance stories, a little bit of mine, you know. The girl come from country, come to town, mm. and you know, I would tell them little stories about my life. So Raymond used to always tell me, "Do your story." So Raymond was one. My first thought when I thought about this, and there are people like Tony Hall. I wish he could have been around to see what I've written. You know, these are two mm -hmm. men that I really respected. But then um, I have Ifibo Wilkinson here. I want to thank him too, and my darling, my darling, my darling, my darling, Mary Coffey. She's a writer as well. Mm -hmm. She's yeah, she is mm -hmm. one that um, she we we started working together just like how it's it, 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 no, it's just magic. I. I've met two wonderful women in my life in the last two, three years, and Mary Coffey and well, I know I know Michelle here is not a really long time, but uh -huh. looking together this two <laughs> is something I really like. So I like Mary Coffey. She's the first person I gave to read it, and so she would say, "Oh God, because I started cussing in the first in my first dialogue was cuss." She said, "Penny, um, um, I would think that." <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> So I, you know, I love, I love, I love Mary, and I take advice well. You know, it's not all about yeah, me. yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. I love Mary Coffee. She was one to guide me through the story. Um, and my family and my friends, I have some really good friends out there who has always been supportive, and and some of them will be reading it and might be a little um, a little shocked, but um, it's just part of the life story of Penelope. I it's just part of the life. That's all it is. I want to thank. <laughs> Thank all those people that's really been there helping me and guiding me and, and keeping my story alive because my story far from finished. You know, that's just one chapter. All right. So, so, you, so wait, could we, could we expect, no, I know you're going into writing the children's book. Could we expect more from you in terms of writing? You know? See, I don't know. This story, writing this chapter was such a release. You have no idea. Mm. It's like such a uh, you know, you want. I wanted to give it away and let it go because I just wanted to change all the time. And I know, no, should I write that? Should I really expose this about yourself, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to write any more about myself. I don't mind writing okay. stories about because I love to write plays. I love to write more. Yes, we know that. Yeah. I like to write children's stories, but I don't know. Maybe if God guides mm -hmm. me to go there, I I might. But it was such right. a such a heaviness. Yeah. Well, we, we, we will wait and see. We will wait. We are sometimes so we will yeah, wait. Maybe people call for that. Maybe I don't think about. Yeah, it. yeah. We will wait. We will call for it and wait for it. <laughs> so, yeah. people, there you have it. We have spent the last half an hour or so with Auntie Penny here, and we are grateful to you, Miss Penelope Spencer. I'm gonna call you full government name. You wanna yes. thank you so much for joining us. For being with us, Nalas appreciates it. Um, Arima Public Library appreciates it. All our viewers, I am I am sure those who are now and those who will be watching the replay, we appreciate it. We appreciate you and all the work you have done over the years. I believe yes. by now you're a household name. We know you, we love you, and we are the house. 
is <laughs> according to the house, right? So people listen. You want to see Auntie Penny's story? Yes. Not on the stage, but on paper. By Virago Warrior Woman, the Butterfly Edition. It's dropping on the 21st. We have the launch 5 p.m. at Trin City Mall. There yes. will be a few copies there Let's on see. sale for the price of absolutely 10 purple notes. I tell all you that purple is the color, so you have to buy the book with purple notes. 10 purple notes. You can get your book $200 cash, local TT, and it will also be on Amazon for 30 yes. US dollars. All right. So you don't want to miss this book. I have already stated and I have made up in my mind that this book is going to be a bestseller. It is going to be a book on high demand. Where have you seen a book with 15 women coming together to pour their hearts and lies out to show people how they have triumphed in their life? It's a story that could change yours. All right. So yeah. Get your copy of the book. Be there on the launch. It's also launching in New York on the 9th of December, mm -hmm. as well as in Miami on the 14th of December. And yes. we we'll also want to look out for the Phoenix edition. That is the Barbados edition of this very variable book. So you don't want to miss any of these. You don't want to miss out on your opportunity to have this awesome title. Get your pockets ready. Well, your pockets are supposed to be ready by now because we know because how much... The sales of this book going to a charity that is helping women in domestic situations. Precisely. The we are officially launching on the 25th of November. That's International Day of the Elimination of Violence Against Women. So the funds are not going to just pay money and we're getting money. No, we're not getting the money. The funds right. from this book going to a domestic violence, um, a shelter for... The shelter, yeah, One that's the right, yeah. Just want nice. to thank KFC and Medical Associates and Extra Foods and Trin City Mall and Nexus Advertising and GMG TV T Live. Please thank you, thank you for sponsorship. You don't know how you're helping mm. out us. So. And I want to thank all the people who helped me. Um, Princess on the lawn. I want to talk to my friends, my family, my son, Steve Spencer. I love you. Okay. <laughs> people, you heard it right here. Stay here. Tomorrow, please, God, we're going to meet another virus. Go remember, I tell you, keep your devices charged. Stay safe. Love you guys. Thank you from Nalas. Thank you, Auntie Penelope. Thank and we you. will see you tomorrow. Please, God, have a good afternoon, everyone. You too, love. Bye-bye.